Welcome to Discovering the Law. My name is Lucy Rivera and I am your host for today. Today we have a very special guest. We have attorney John Postel. He is a commercial litigator, but he focuses his practice also in debt collection. Attorney John Postel, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for having me, Lucy. Um, John, may I please um, ask what what is debt? What is debt collection all about? So de debt collection is about um, holding people responsible for their obligations. So a debt is um, any type of transaction where somebody um, gets goods or services and doesn't pay for them. And so there are generally two categories of debt collection, business debt, which is what I focus on, and consumer debt. So with consumer debt, it's debt that you incur for household purposes. For instance, um, credit card bills, medical bills, student loans, electric bills, and things of that nature. Um, in this type of broad law, are there any are there any statutes or laws enacted that oversee this practice? Yes. So um, there are a number of uh, state and federal laws that protect consumers um, in a debt collection situation. And so in, on the federal level, there's the Federal Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. And on the state level, there's um, general laws, Massachusetts, Chapter 93A, and then the Attorney General also has regulations for um, enforcing it and um, holding uh, debt collectors uh, accountable and making sure that they are collecting debts in accordance with state and federal law. That's really interesting. You mentioned at the state level we have the Attorney General, but there is also a federal agency that oversees the enactment and the administration of debt collection federal. Yes, um, so that's the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. And in addition to uh, enforcing the, the federal laws, they also promulgate uh, federal regulations that um, debt collectors have to follow um, when they're collecting consumer debts. That's very interesting, the debt collectors have to follow. Please talk to us about the process of debt collection. So uh, debt collection really starts at the level of the, the original creditor, the person to who the money is owed. And so if you take a, um, the example of a credit card, so if you have a credit card bill and you don't pay it, the credit card company will call you and they'll try to get you to uh, make payments and, and uh, get current with your debt. If that doesn't work, then a lot of times they'll send it to a collection agency, which will do the same thing. They'll send letters, they'll make phone calls and try to get the consumer to pay. And then if that doesn't work, then they will um, send it to a law firm, somebody like me, uh, to eventually sue somebody. And so at each sta stage of that process, when you get into the collection agency or the attorneys, um, they have to follow all of these state and federal rules. And the rules are very uh, specific and they govern um, when you can contact somebody, how many times you can call them, when you can call them, if you're going to send letters, what the, those letters have to say, um, what you have to tell them, and also to tell consumers what their rights are in terms of the debt collection process, if they want to dispute a debt, and how they can go about doing that. That's great to know. Um, I think this is probably applicable to most of our viewers that find themselves in this situation. Um, do Can you tell us in particular about this debt collection agencies? Do they need to be, um, what are the requirements for them to go ahead and collect this debt? Do they need to, to be licensed or are there they, any other? They do. So in, and not every state requires them to be licensed, but Massachusetts does require collection agencies to be licensed and they're actually licensed through the Division of Banks. And so they have to um, apply and provide information about their finances and, and their, their operations. And um, again, if they uh, go out of bounds and they, they don't follow these, these state and federal laws, um, not only um, can uh, the federal government can, can go after them, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau um, could potentially hold them accountable, the Attorney General, um, or under the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, a consumer who has been the victim of an unscrupulous debt collector can file a lawsuit uh, for violation of the, the act, we call it the FDCPA. FDCPA, what does that stand for? So that's the Federal Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. Great, so I know you touched upon a little bit about on the um, process to protect consumers, but can you 
tell us um, a little bit more about how do the state law protect consumers and then also how does the federal law protect consumers? So the, at the federal level, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau will enact these regulations and uh, to address things that they're concerned about on the federal level that debt collectors are not doing or to enact uh, more protections for consumers. Um, on the state level, the Attorney General can do the same thing. And so the either one, whether it's the Attorney General or the CFPB, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, can launch an investigation of debt collectors and sometimes debt collection attorneys and bring uh, lawsuits against them for monetary fines and also um, consent judgments so uh, to force the debt collector to change its practices. And so as a part of a court uh, ordered settlement, the debt collector will agree to um, have better paperwork, to not um, make as many calls to debtors, to not threaten things. Um, one of the things that um, is illegal is you can't threaten to do something that you don't have a legal right to do. So as a debt collector, you can't call somebody and say, if you don't pay this bill, I'm going to send the sheriff to your door and they're going to come and they're going to arrest you and put you in jail until you pay this <laughs> money. That's illegal and they that can't do that. Terrible. So if a debt collector did that, then somebody at a state or federal level would probably be suing them. Well, that sounds very interesting because then that comes to mind. Do these debtors who actually have a debt and they need to pay it, but do they have any rights? They, they do. They have they had a lot of rights under the, the federal and, and state laws. And so one of the, the rights they have is they can, they can control how the debt collector communicates with them. So they can ask for that um, they not be called on the phone. They can be asked, they could actually be asked uh, to cease all communications, in which case then it's going to kind of go right to me and they're going to say, well, this debtor doesn't want to talk to us, so mm. let's just sue them. Um, the debtor can ask for verification or validation of a debt. And this happens a lot in credit cards because, as you know, with credit cards, you're making new charges, you're making payments, um, you're carrying interest on overdue balances, and so your balance is always changing. And sometimes it can be very confusing for a consumer to understand the nature of the debt and how much do they really owe. And so one of the rights they have is they can seek verification or validation of the debt and require the debt collector to, to spell out how much is owed. Um, and so these are, these are things, rights that they have under the law that they can, the federal law that they can um, ask to have to help them in the, in the debt collection process. Um, that's very interesting. Um, but for example, um, once you owe a debt, you, it's your obligation. Are there any defenses to for this debt or some debt collection there are, process? There are some defenses. The, the biggest defense would be uh, statute of limitations. And so every, every case um, has to be brought within a certain time period. And usually it's six years. And so if a debt collector or a lawyer comes after you and sues you in year seven and the debt is more than six years old, and it's beyond what we call the statute of limitations. And in that case, um, it's actually a violation of the Federal Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, the FDCPA, to sue on a debt that's out of statute. And so that's, that's a, one of the biggest defenses that, that a debtor has. Um, and the other is, um, again, it does get tricky for the debt collectors when they're dealing with these issues of balances and interest and how much is owed, that they have to really be very precise and, and not try to sue the debtor for too much money, because that's also a violation of the act. And explain to us a little bit that about that, how, what do you mean too much money? Because there is a debt and that's what's owed plus interest. So how could that be more of that? Um, because as I said, in the case of a credit card where you've got new charges are accruing, payments are being made, and then interest is being calculated on the overdue balance. And so depending on, a lot of times with credit cards, depending on where in your credit card cycle you make your payment, it can affect how much of that money is going to go, how much interest is going to accrue on that debt. And so it can be easy for a, a debt collector to miscalculate the amount of the outstanding interest on the balance and ask for too much money. Okay, um, so if uh, a debtor is contacted by a debt collector, what do you recommend they do? I recommend uh, communication is key. And so 
if you ignore a debt, um, as I indicated, there was a whole process. So you've got the, the credit card company is calling you, mm -hmm. and you ignore it. And then the collection agency is calling you, and you ignore it. And then I'm calling you, <laughs> and I'm sending you letters, and you ignore me. I'm going to file a lawsuit. If you ignore that, that lawsuit, I'm going to get a judgment, and then it's going to be conclusively determined in the court that you owe this money. And now, once it's been established, you have fewer and fewer opportunities to try to work this out. And so, um, unless you just don't owe the debt, uh, but even in that case, you should get on the phone with whoever the debt collector is and explain your situation and either say, I don't think I owe this debt, or I don't think I owe this much, or I agree I owe it, but I can't pay it. Can we work out a deal? And so, the earlier in the process that you start those communications, the more that the debt collector will work with you and the better deal that you can get. The further you get in the process, um, the, le the fewer options that you have. And so if a debtor calls me and I already have a judgment from the court, and that judgment is earning interest. In Massachusetts, judgments earn interest at 12% per year. And the interest can add up very, very quickly. And so in a lot of cases, you may be better off looking that, facing that 12% obligation to get a loan, borrow money from a family member, and pay the judgment, and try to save the money on the interest. That sounds um, very scary with the interest compounding. Uh, I want to follow up. I want to ask you follow up questions about the debt verification and how does that go about. But I'd like to remind the audience that today we're learning from attorney John Fossil. He's a commercial, lit commercial litigator attorney and also in debt collection business. And my name is Lucy Rivera, and this episode will be viewed at www.discoveringthelaw.com. Um, so, Attorney John Puzzle, can you please uh, talk to us a little bit more about when a debt is contacted by an agency? How do they go about inquiring or verifying debt verification that you mentioned to us earlier? In the, in the debt collection process, when you're initially contacted by a collection agency, they'll actually send you paperwork and they'll send you a form. And you can indicate right on the form whether you agree with the debt, you disagree with the debt, or you request verification of the debt. And if you request verification of the debt, then the debt collector has to stop all collection efforts until that verification is provided. And so sometimes um, debt can be transferred or sold. And so a credit card company might take a packet of bad debt and sell it to a company that buys it for sometimes pennies on the dollar. And so you may get a debt collection notice and you're being told you owe money to a company that you've never heard of. So part of the debt verification process is that the debt collector will tell you who the original creditor was. And so you can say, oh, that was, that was my credit card bill. It was sold to another company. Yes, I remember. Now I remember what this debt is about. And then you can negotiate it. Interesting. So now you also talked about people getting sued. Tell us about that. What happens if a debtor gets sued? So most, most debt collection occurs in small claims court. And small claims court is very informal. And again, not only is communication key, but also if you are told to, to go to court, you should always show up in court. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, um, something bad will probably happen to you. So if there's a small claims case and you miss your court date, the court will enter what's called a default judgment, which is they will enter a judgment for the plaintiff, in this case the creditor, um, and a judgment will issue, it will go on your credit, and then uh, you'll be summoned back to court to be subject to a payment order, and you'll be ordered to pay this debt because it's been established that you owe it. So if you are told to be in court, you should always show up, and at that point you can negotiate um, even with the, with the debt collector or with the attorney, um, even at the small claims court level, um, the courts want these things to be worked out, the creditors want them to be worked out, so go to court, meet with the lawyer, and try to work something out. That is a very sound advice. Um, we have 10 minutes left, but we still have a few things to cover. I was wondering if you could tell us more about that lawsuit in small claims court. Um, you mentioned something about judgment and what happens if a creditor gets judgment. So once a judgment enters, um, as I've said, a couple of, couple of things happen that are not good for the, the person that owes the debt. One is now interest is going to start to accrue at 12 percent, and then I have a lot more tools at my disposal to help me collect that debt. So 
if you're working, I can garnish your wages, which means your employer will take money out of your paycheck every two weeks and give it to me. I can put a lien on your house so you, you can't um, sell or refinance your house without dealing with this debt. Um, I can sometimes seize assets you have, like a car um, or a bank account. And I can keep doing that until the judgment, including all of that interest that is accruing, is paid in full. I see. Um, so you did talk earlier about some of the defenses for consumers. And you did describe a little bit that bankruptcy was an option. So we do have ample time that you can maybe go into it a little bit more. Explain to us what would happen. Uh, are there any other options for consumers? So bankruptcy is, is really the, the nuclear option. And a couple of things happen when somebody files bankruptcy. One is that all outstanding litigation, both in state court and federal court, immediately comes to a halt without any further action by the court. It's called an automatic stay. And so that's the, the biggest immediate relief for somebody when they file bankruptcy is everything stops. The, the credit card companies stop calling, the lawsuits all stop in their tracks while the bankruptcy process plays out. Um, there are two types of, for consumers, there are two types of bankruptcy. There's Chapter 7 and there's Chapter 13. And in Chapter 7, if you really just are, are completely upside down and you just can't possibly ever pay your debts, you file a Chapter 7 and all of your debt gets wiped out. All these debts, they get, it's called the discharge. They all get erased and you get a fresh start and you can go back and, um, and live your life and, and have all of this in your past. Um, and that has some repercussions to your credit and your ability to you know, buy a house or buy a car in the future. If you are working and you're able to pay your debts but you need help from the bankruptcy court to restructure your debt, you can enter into Chapter 13, which is a repayment plan where you repay your debts or a portion of your debts over a period of time um, and you deal with your debts that way. Uh, <clears throat> so would that be based on a court order? Um, or we could, if the debtor fails to comply with the court orders from the bankruptcy? So, right, so bankruptcy is, um, is a federal court proceeding. And so, um, as I said, under, under federal bankruptcy law, um, all of the, the state and federal litigation has to stop immediately, and then everything, all of the disputes get resolved in bankruptcy court. So if you, um, if you your debts, basically, they, they get adjudicated in that, in that forum. And so, and there is an opportunity sometimes to work things out. You know, if you have a car loan, but you need, to, need your car, and you want to keep your car so you can get to work, um, you can deal with that in bankruptcy court. Or if you don't want uh, your house to be foreclosed on, you can try to work out a deal. And so all that happens in bankruptcy court. But you are right that if you don't follow the, the rules in the bankruptcy court and you don't comply with the bankruptcy court orders, you can get kicked out of bankruptcy court and then all of that, all of those things will just start up again. Um. I understand. Uh, we did talk a little bit about the Fair Debt Collection Act, and we talked about um, what happens when you violate this law and about the fine. Could you expand on that aspect? Yeah, so in addition to the, the state and federal agencies having the ability to investigate and punish debt collectors for their bad acts, consumers also have rights under the act. And so if a debt collector violates the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act, be it a collection agency or a law firm, the debtor can sue the debt collector in, in federal court and they can recover $1,000 per violation plus attorney's fees. And so you can seek the, the assistance of a consumer protection lawyer who can help you file a lawsuit and their fees will get paid by, by the debt collector if you win. And so that's uh, another powerful tool you have. Now, it doesn't, it doesn't erase your debt, but it does give you um, a way to hold a debt collector accountable if they're acting in you know, an unfair or deceptive manner. Very interesting. So, so far, we've covered consumer debt, as you mentioned. However, your forte, business collection for debt. Uh, please talk to us a little bit about that aspect. So, uh, business to business debt, uh, you're right, that's where I concentrate most of my practice. And the biggest difference is all of these laws that we've been talking about and all these protections largely don't exist when you're collecting business debt. 
So the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act applies specifically to what we call consumer debt. And so if you have a small business um, and you are not meeting your obligations, um, it's going to be a more aggressive process. So commercial debt collectors are going to be more aggressive. Commercial debt collection attorneys are going to be more aggressive. And so the, the communication that I talked about earlier becomes even more critical that if you're a small business owner, and we understand the challenges of small businesses, and especially in a post-COVID world, um, COVID was, was disastrous for the business world, and a lot of businesses, as we know, are just not here anymore because of that. And so we understand that, and again, um, my goal is I want to work with you and come up with a solution where, where you can pay your debt, um, I can get paid, my client can get paid, and you can um, come up with an agreement that you can live with and continue on and continue to run your business. Great. So for our audience today, we've learned from attorney John Possel, who is doing commercial, litiga commercial litigation and also debt collection, mostly for business. But however, today we learned about consumer protection. We have only one minute and a half left. What are some of the takeaways that we can leave our audience? For? Uh, the first takeaway, I think, is to to be responsible with the way that you incur and manage debt. And so credit cards can be very helpful, but they can also be very dangerous. <laughs> if you get yourself in trouble, communication is the key. Um, talk to us, work with the debt collectors, try to work something out. You don't want to get sued. You don't want to have to file bankruptcy. Um, get on the phone with us. We want to help you. We want to help you work things out and know your rights. And there's, there's a lot of resources on the web for people. If you're on the, the wrong end of a debt collection action, um, you can Google all of these, these laws, and there are a lot of very helpful websites that will help consumers to know their rights. Great. Well, uh, for our audience, thank you so much for your time today and for staying with us. Uh, my name is Lucy Rivera. I am an attorney as well, and this is Discovering the Law. This episode can be viewed at www.discoveringthelaw.com. And today with us was Attorney John Fossil. Thank you so much for being here today, Attorney Fossil. Thank you for having me. Um, and thank you for watching. Uh, we hope to see you next month. <laughs>